Are you a sales manager that needs to report to the board as well as manage and coach your reps? Or are you a rep that needs an efficient way of managing all your sales leads? Well, if so, keep watching this video because I'm gonna show you a quick way of setting up an effective dashboard that's not only gonna show you how many leads you've got in the system, but also what's happening at any given time. Now that's gonna help you structure your sales process. It's gonna give you a big picture view of everything in your pipeline. Okay then, so what I'm gonna do is talk you through this dashboard that I've set up. So what this is, is a sales dashboard that firstly looks at our different life cycle stages and breaks them down by the lead status. So these are my MQLs or marketing qualified leads and these are my SQLs or sales qualified leads. Now, if you don't know what MQL, SQL are or you haven't defined them, go and have a look in the uh, description box for another video that we've recorded, which is all about how to understand your sales lead statuses, your life cycle statuses and your deal stages. Okay, so um, I've broken these down, MQL, SQL, and then within here, I've got our lead statuses. So I can see now at any given time, how many new MQLs I've got, how many new SQLs I've got. I can also see the ones that I'm attempting to connect uh, with, so the ones that I'm trying to phone. I can also see the ones that I have connected. And at any time I want to, I can just click into this dashboard, see the leads, click into the, uh, the uh, contact records, and then work and progress those leads through there. Further down here, I've got a bigger picture lifecycle stage report. So this is telling me how many subscribers, leads, MQLs, SQLs, and opportunities that I have. And this is telling me my deals and how many deal state, uh, how many deals I've got in each stage. Now I'm in a uh, test portal, so all this is dummy data. Um, these are the stages that uh, we've set up for us or for, for this demonstration. You may have your other stages uh, there. Okay, so that's how you use the dashboard. Let's now go and set it up. So what we're gonna to do to set up our dashboard is firstly, we're gonna to navigate to the dashboard tool. Now you can do that uh, through the reports and then uh, the option there for dashboards. Now it might be that you've got your dashboard set up as uh, your home page within HubSpot, in which case you could just hit the uh, HubSpot icon up the top here and that will take you there. Now when you get to your dashboards tool, um, if you've got access to other dashboards, it will take you to your default one and you can select your other ones up here. Otherwise it will show you like an introductory screen with instructions on creating your first one. So what we're now gonna do is just go over to the Create Dashboard, and then I'm gonna hit the New Dashboard, and I'm gonna give it a name, Hublight Sales Dashboard, okay? And then I've got uh, options to limit access. I'm just gonna keep this as everybody being able to view and edit, but I can change that if I want to. Gonna hit the Create Dashboard, and my dashboard's now created and I can hit the go to your dashboard message up here and it takes me to this blank dashboard asking me to uh, add reports. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit the add reports to the dashboard and we're gonna create these from scratch. Now there's, uh, as you saw at the, at the beginning of this video, there's reports four. that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna do the first one, create report. And the first one we're gonna do is the lead status um, that looks at the MQL lead statuses and the SQL lead statuses. So this is a single object report. It's a really straightforward single um, report that only uses the contact record. So if I hit the single object and hit contacts, and then next, okay, the default options here are life cycle stage and create date. Now we want the lead status. So we're gonna hit the add contact property and I'm gonna type in lead status or so start typing it in until it comes up and lead status is there. Okay, so that's the that's the field that I want. Okay, so what I now do is say, now I've got my field that I want, I go over to my visualization, and I'm gonna tell HubSpot how do I want to see it. Well, I like the vertical um, columns, but you could have it in a table, you could have it as a pie chart, you could have it as a, uh, a KPI summary, so it's just displaying numbers. Okay, so I'm selecting my column chart, and I want to display my lead status. So this is now saying I've got to add more properties because just saying lead status on its own doesn't actually tell HubSpot much. So we've got to tell it what we want to do. We want it to count the contacts. I'm gonna add that in as well. 
And now you can see that those have been added, but there's something strange going on. It says there's no data to show in this time frame. Okay, well, that's because there's a predetermined filter uh, that's already up here. If you look at the filters button in the top left, yeah, it says uh, that um, the required filters is the crate date is this quarter so far. Well, as I'm, um, we're in our demo portal, uh, we've not actually created any data this quarter. Um, we've created lots of data in here, but it's older. So I'm just going to change this to say all time and update the filter. But you, you may want to use that to say, well, I want to know what's happening this month or I want to know what's happened last month. So you could just say crate date is last month, for example. Okay, but I'm going to use is all time. And now that I've selected that, you can see how the data has started to populate. Okay, now this is showing me all leads at the moment, or all of our uh, contact records. So anything that's got um, a lead status, where we've got 437 contacts in here that have got no lead status, uh, and we've got these ones here that do have. But I don't want all leads, I only want marketing qualified leads. So I'm going to add in another filter. And um, this comes under the life cycle stage. And then I say, is any of marketing qualified lead? And I apply the filter. So there you have it. It's showing me now all of my marketing qualified leads and showing me the lead status. Now, what you might want to do is you might want to add in another filter in here to get rid of any closed leads or any um, that aren't, aren't progressing. So if I add in another filter here and I say, and lead status, this time I'm gonna use the um, none of category. I'm gonna say, well, I don't want to report on anything that is bad timing or unqualified. Okay, so it's only showing me sort of active leads, if you like, or, or leads that we need to work on. So I'm going to hit apply. And again, um, it's refreshed uh, on this occasion. There wasn't any change um, because of the demo data, but in yours, you'd probably see some change. Okay, so now I'm going to hit my save and I'm going to say uh, add to the existing dashboard and I'm going to tell it which dashboard I want to give it. And I'm going to give it a name of MQL lead status. Okay, so if I save and add that to my dashboard and then go to my dashboard, my dashboard, you'll see that that report is there. So the next report I wanted to create was the SQL lead status. Now I could go and do the same um, process and just uh, um, add change the filter so it says um, SQL rather than MQL, but I've also got a shortcut to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these three little dots here and I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to clone it to the same dashboard and I'm going to just rename it before I clone it to say SQL lead status. Okay, I'm going to save and add that. And there it is. And if I hit these three lines here, I've got the choice to either go back into the customization, um, yeah, the full builder tool, um, but I can also just change this here. It's got the filter, lifecycle stages, any of marketing qualified lead. If I click on that, it then um, I can get rid of that and then just select sales qualified lead and update it. And you can see now the data has changed. I can update that and my first two um, reports are, are done. Okay, so the next um, uh, report I wanted was a simple count of uh, what leads I've got and, uh, and what life cycle stages they are. So again, I'm just gonna go add report, create report. Again, this one is a single object report because it's a very straightforward, simple um, report. It's only using a contact record. So I'm gonna select contacts and I'm gonna hit next. And you can see here that it's actually already selected um, life cycle stages and the create date. So I'm just gonna go and amend the filter because of the same issue. So the create date, uh, date is uh, all time. But again, you might want to change it for last month, this month and so on. And I'm gonna update that filter, go to my visualization and I just want my life cycle stage and my count of contacts. So there you see it's broken it down uh, it's given me a count of each one. And again, I can change the visualization. So I could say, well, I want it in a summary report, or I want it in a vertical bar chart. Um, I might want it in a pie chart. Okay, but as I, say, I prefer this one here. 
Okay, so I'm going to save that again, and this one I'm just going to say life cycle stage. Okay, add it to the existing dashboard and go to my dashboard, and you'll see it is now there. So the next report that I want is the deal stage report. So again, I'm just going to go to my add report button, create the report. And again, it is a single object report, but this time it's not a contact record. I'm reporting on my deal records. So I hit the deal records and I hit next. And you'll see again that it's already come up with deal stage uh, and it's come up with the amount. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to visualization. And you see when I go to visualization, it now gives me the option to, to do the count of deals. So I want the deal stage and I want the count of deals. Okay, again, it's showing me nothing because if I look at my filters, um, it's got create date is this quarter so far. So I'm going to use is all time. Now we have multiple pipelines uh, within our system. Okay, so in, in this occasion, I'm going to add another filter um, that is going to give me my pipeline. And so my pipeline is any of uh, the Hublite demo pipeline. Okay, and apply that. Okay, and you can now see that I've got this report now. Um, for the deal stage report, I, I don't particularly like this. You, you might do, but I'm going to change my visualization. So if I hide my filters, I'm going to change the visualization here. Uh, and this time, I'm just going to make it a um, like a uh, uh, the numbers, what they call a KPIs. Okay, so I'm going to save that one and give that one a uh, deal stage report and then add that and then go to the dashboard okay and here it is the deal stage report is there now I can move these around change the order I can you know if I, if I wanted this one to be bigger I could just uh, make that like that if I wanted to you know I can change it around how I want to so that's how you create that report very very simple straightforward but hopefully you'll agree it's very very useful Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to set up an automation so that when a lead comes in, the lead status is automatically updated. So um, when a lead is created, there's nothing that tells HubSpot, there's no sort of a, a built-in automation um, that sets the lead status to, to new. So what we need to do is we just go over to our automation and workflows, and we're going to create a workflow, and we're going to go from scratch, and... Uh, it's a contact based work workflow and a blank workflow to start with. And it's a very simple workflow again. Um, the workflows work by triggers and then actions. So we're going to set up a trigger that says a form submission. So let's say we get a sales form come in, a sales inquiry form on your website if you have one. Okay, so this would be a what we call a more bottom funnel type form, uh, etc. So um, I've already created a form um, called Hublite Sales Inquiry Form. Okay, and um, I'm saying that if my trigger is if anyone fills out this form on any page, I'm happy with that. And I save that. Okay, and then I hit the plus, and then I'm going to say I want to set a property. There's two properties that I want to set. Okay, so set property value. The first property that I want to set is the life cycle stage. So the life cycle stage I want to set as SQL because it's a sales inquiry form. So it's a more of a bottom funnel. Um, so someone's actually making a sales inquiry. Okay, I'm going to press save. Okay, and then the next property that I want to do. So again, hit the plus, come down to um, set property value, and I'm going to go to... Um, here I'm going to uh, set the lead status and we're going to call that one a new. So that's uh, that is that workflow done. I'm just going to call it a name, set um, sales status and lifecycle stage from sales inquiry form. Okay, so again, that's just a demo of how to automate this. You might have other triggers here. Um, yeah, I've just done a simple form, um, yeah, sales inquiry form, but you might have other triggers. So, for example, you might have somebody um, 
set a property uh, on the contact record and manually set it and you could use uh, a trigger of a property value being set um, yeah lots of different different things um, with triggers uh, it's not the purpose of this video to give you a full workflow um, a workflow uh, tutorial that will come in a later video now uh, that one's done um, so I'm just going to go back to my workflows I'm going to um, clone this workflow and I'm going to change it uh, from a sales inquiry. Um, I'm going to just going to call it from a download form. So this is if, for example, someone has downloaded an ebook. Okay, they're not necessarily an SQL at this time, but, they, but you might say that you want them to be an MQL. So I'm going to submit that. I'm then going to go and edit this. So the form submission that I'm using as my trigger is no longer this one. So I'm deleting that. And then I'm going to hit the or, go down to form submissions. And again, I've got uh, one called Hubble Up Light ebook download form. So that is my trigger. Save that. Okay. And then I'm going to set my lifecycle stage to MQL rather than SQL. Save that. Okay. My lead status is still new. Now, one thing to consider with your triggers, you have what we call a re-enrollment option. So basically, the default for re-enrollment is off. So if somebody comes in a second time, the person isn't going to go through that, um, that workflow. If you decide, well, actually, I still want um, the, uh, them to be set as new. If they come a second time, then um, you would click the re-enrollment. Do bear in mind, though, that the standard behavior in, um, for the lifecycle stage is that you don't go backwards. So if a customer came and downloaded this uh, ebook, they wouldn't. Uh, they they would have their lead status set to new, but they wouldn't have um, their lifecycle stage put back to MQL. So if you found this video useful, um, I'd ask you to do two things. Firstly, is to click the like button here. That helps us, uh, helps other people see the video as well. Uh, the second is to click subscribe so that we can notify you and you can see any other sort of useful content that we put out. Bye for now.